Hey everybody, it's Matt from Unior Horror Movies, and welcome to another random review. Uh, this week I am doing a review from Scream Factory. It is a contemporary film. Uh, pretty much it was done in 2015, and it was just released this Tuesday in 2016. I actually found it at Best Buy for $12.99, and it was well worth the, uh, the price to pick up. And that is called The Funhouse Massacre. Now this has a reverse cover art. Now, the reverse cover art, the original cover art, I don't think is the greatest, so I definitely reversed it, but what it has is freaking insane thing going on. All right, this contemporary is got some great cameos from Robert England, who plays the warden of a mental asylum, uh, Clint Howard, who plays a one of the insane asylum's characters. He is an insane taxidermist, which is pretty cool. Uh, Courtney Gaines, who was in uh, Children of the Corn, he was Malachi, and he was also in you know, The Burbs. He was a weird, weird red-headed guy. Uh, Jir Burns, he, uh, if you know him from Angie Tribeca, the show is pretty interesting. It's a uh, spoof comedy, kind of like uh, Naked Gun. He plays the, the, the detective in this, but in this movie he plays a insane religious cult leader. So pretty much on Halloween... Uh, a specific fun house is happening, this haunted attraction, that's based on several psychotic serial killers. Well, at the same time, this um, daughter of one of those insane psychopaths helps break out five out of the, the asylum. Now, these psychopaths, like I said, one is the religious cult leader, played by Jerry Burns. Clint Howard is a, an insane... Uh, taxidermist. There is a chef who was cutting up people and serving them and eating them. <laughs> uh, you have an insane dentist who likes to drill. And also you have this uh, giant monster guy who is a professional wrestler and he was just killing people in the ring. So he just crushes people. So they all break out and head towards the uh, to the uh, fun house because now they can play in this scenario as themselves and thinking they can kill people left and right as a haunted attraction well you have this uh sheriff who has a link with one of the insane asylum people and she comes to find out that uh there was a breakout everyone was murdered and now everyone's trapped in this fun house getting murdered and they have to stop it so now it's pretty much uh, the cops and a couple of these, I guess they're college kids that are stuck, have to fight off these insane monsters, pretty much. Uh, that is the, the review of the film. Now, my thoughts on this movie. I loved it, but it's weird, the way this movie goes. It starts off serious, then it has some. Then it goes into a comedy aspect, then it goes back to serious, then comedy. It was like bouncing back and forth. But it, it worked for me the way it did. The deputy in this movie was kind of annoying. It's weird because he was being this weird goofball, dumbass, moron guy. Then he was all, all serious. Then he was being a, a dumbass again. It just His character didn't make sense. If he stayed more serious, I think, the role, the role of his role, that would have been perfect. But he, he was contaminating scenes. He was goofing around, leaving the phone off the hook. So, I don't know, that was weird. Also, too, there's six killers right up there. And also one being the daughter. She plays a stitch-faced uh, character. She's like a Harlequin going around stitching people's mouths shut, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Out of all the killers, they don't really use the taxidermist much and the cook. The dentist is shown here and there, but the taxidermist who played by Clint Howard would have been awesome if they had more of him. They kind of centralize around the clown guy, who is the giant wrestler, who rips a guy's face off and wears it. It looks pretty badass, though. But he goes around killing most of the people. Uh, Clint Howard's character is kind of off to the side, as well as the cook. Uh, the cook was just there, and uh, I wish they utilized him more, too. I'd love to see, like, a cool, like, a cook-off, or, you know, he was demonstrating some food. And then he was actually serving it to everyone at the guests at the party. That would have been pretty cool. But other than that, 
uh, like I said, this is kind of like a comedy horror or horror. I'm going more horror because there is a lot of blood and guts in this. People are getting mutilated, uh, murdered, destroyed, whatever, how you want to call it. Uh, blood everywhere. It was a lot of fun. Now, this reminds me of a film from, I want to say, the either late 90s, early 2000s when I was in college. I was a VHS tape my roommate and I watched called, I think it was Asylum of Terror. I think that's what it was called or something close to that about a mental insane asylum dude escapes the asylum, breaks into a attraction and starts murdering people left and right in front of everybody else. And everyone thinks it's part of the show. So, and that movie was just horrible. Oh, my roommate and I still joke about that film, how bad it was. This one is so much better. I'm going to tell my buddy about this and tell him to check it out and see if he rem remembers the film from when we were in college. <laughs> but this one was a lot of fun. Uh, they could have removed some of the, the goofiness again. But other than that, solid flick. I highly recommend checking out this as well. Like I said, you can probably get it right on Amazon or go to Best Buy for like 12 bucks. Definitely well worth the film. A lot of great acting, a lot of great special effects. The gore was great. Um, typical teenagers or college kids, whatever you are, you got your stoners, you have your, your jock, uh, you have your nympho, uh, the one guy that's kind of shy but he likes the girl type of deal. So you got all that going for them. It's great. Uh, some definitely funny moments. It even does. There's one dude in this movie who walks around texting the whole entire time. And it's just goofy at the end where the one reaction that happens, I laugh my ass off. So that was pretty funny. Also, too, <clears throat> stay for the end of the credits. There is something post-credits as well. So I don't understand what that was going for, but we'll see what happens there. Be kind of neat. There is something mid-credit line, too, so just let it play through. I always now fast forward through the credits because you never know if there's a little surprise at the end and there is a surprise at the end of this. So definitely check it out guys. Thanks very much for watching. Check out uh, the Funhouse Massacre. I give this an 8 out of 10. So that is my review for you and I hope you enjoyed this random review. You have yourself a good weekend and stay safe. Peace.